Welcome again friends. In this video we will be talking about the function of different antibodies and I am not going to talk about a lot. I am going to talk about a very little about the functions of antibodies. So let me take a color first. Let's take black. Okay. Now uh, I am not going to talk about the antibody response here which is this picture. I am going to talk about simple three different important functions that are played by antibodies. Now let's first talk about how the antibodies are produced in a very uh, very brief way that we all know that antibody are produced by B cells. You all know that, right? So we are having B lymphocytes or B cells. Now the B cells are the antibody secreting factories. Now among those B cells, they are matured what we call a large plasma plasma cell. So let me write it as a plasma cell. Now this plasma cell can secrete antibody molecules outside. So they, this is this plasma cells are the factory, right? Now for the production, what we need, we need the activation of B cell. And how the B cells are getting activated? Let's say here it is the B cell, and it also interacts with the helper T cells or TH. You all know that, right? T helper cells are required. Now this T helper cell will interact with B cell via the B cell receptor and also other other important components. And after this interaction, after the interaction via MHC, now B cell uh, provides the antigen uh, which is engulfed. So suppose Suppose let's say this is a bacteria. Let's say this is a bacteria. The bacteria enters into our body and this bacteria is having surface antigens, right? Now when the bacteria attach it with the B cell, the B cell will engulf this bacteria via receptor mediated endocytosis and after that it will chop up the fra those, those bacterial antigen into smaller fragments and then hold on to this antigen outside onto uh, and, and including the MHC molecule because we know this B cell is a part of antigen presenting cell so they can present antigen so if this is the B cell after chopping it up with the help of MHC class 2 molecule it will hold on to what you call the bacterial antigen outside so here we can see the bacterial antigen now using this MHC bacterial antigen helper T cell will attach it uh, with this uh, MHC 2 molecule with this antigen via T cell receptor we all know that T, T, T cell is having T cell receptor. Now this interaction is important along with other interactions, other cytokine exchange interaction as well as co-stimulatory molecule interaction. Uh, it will activate uh, this this uh, B cell. Now once this B cell is getting activated, it is selected uh, to produce a such type of antibodies which will hold on to this this particular uh, bacteria and kill them. So they will start producing all these antibodies and it, it shifts uh, the maturation of B cell. And this maturation will convert the B cell into a plasma cell as you can see here. Now these are larger cells can secrete more and more antibodies. So you can see a lot of antibodies are being produced. Now all these antibodies can go and attack this invading bacteria. Now up to this point we have produced the antibody. Now we are going to see what are the different way this antibody is going to kill uh, the invading pathogen. Now there are three major ways that this antibody can do the job. Now I am telling one important part that neither of this antibody. Antibody cannot uh, degrade the bacterial cell on its own. It requires the activity of other elements. Requires the activity of either macrophage or, or you can say phagocytic cells or uh, they can need uh, the presence of complement system otherwise they cannot uh, kill this kind of uh, uh, foreign pathogen or foreign invader right what they can do on their own is that they can mask uh, the antigen so this is one of the type that they can mask the antigen so let's say this is a bacteria and these red dots are the antigenic determinants onto the surface of bacteria now this antibiotic uh, no, sorry not antibiotic antibody which are produced by this cell they can come and coat all this antigenic region and after coating it what it does is actually it, it masks all these antigenic receptors, antigenic region. As a result, this bacteria cannot enter, cannot do any harm. Now, the second part, uh, second important thing that they can achieve is opsonization. Now, what we mean by opsonization? Opsonization means simply it's a type of phagocytosis, and this phagocytosis is mediated by this antibody. Now, it was found that when you are having only bacterial cell, only small bacterial cells, and you have macrophages and other phagocytic cells, they can engulf this bacterial cell, but the engulf efficiency is less. But once we coat all this antigen with antibody, uh, this, th there is increase in the affinity uh, towards this antigen antibody complex. So macrophage and all the phagocytic cells having higher uh, affinity towards them, so they can go and engulf it pretty easily. So this is called the opsonization part.
right and the third important step that they can achieve and kill the bacterial cell using pore uh, or creating pore onto the bacterial cell creating hole and this is this part is called complement activation because there are complement uh, molecules that are present in our blood serum complement molecules like c3 complement molecules like c5 and all these things c2 and all these things that are present right c4 so these are the complements so they can activate this complement and after activation of the complement they can come and uh, so so after the activation of complement they, they can create pore into the bacterial cell and it will be released but for the activation of this complement it requires the presence of antibody uh, via one important pathway of complement activation okay so this is the process of antibody mediated killing in three different ways and i hope that's helpful thank you